Hi, I'm Adam. So you want to learn game development, huh? Which tutorials should you pick for your skill level? How can you learn from a good tutorial? And what makes a tutorial good in the first place? Stick around while I try to answer all these questions. I'll also give you 6 tips you can do to get more out of tutorials. Before we can answer these questions, however, we need a better understanding of tutorials. Not all tutorials and courses are the same, right? So what's the difference between them? I think we can put all tutorials on a spectrum. On the left hand, we have what I call a manual tutorial or a step-by-step -step tutorial. These are very short, straightforward, and explain a step-by-step -step process of recreating a feature or a whole game. They are kind of like IKEA furniture manuals, right? On the other end of the spectrum, we have the over-explainer or the 3W tutorials. These are not just step-by-step -step guides, they also answer three different W questions. What do we need in order to make a feature or a game? How can we make it? And also, why do we make it that way? In this case, you also get a behind-the-scenes look on the design decisions and the thought process behind coding a feature in a certain way. Again, this is a spectrum, not a binary distinction between the two kinds of tutorials. Educators often emphasize different parts of development while taking others for granted. They might explain a particular concept in a lot of detail because they think it's important, but at the same time they can skip over another one because they think it's trivial. I'm not here to say that manual tutorials are better than 3W tutorials or vice versa. My goal is to provide a framework to think about tutorials when you engage with them. Both have their pros and cons and right use cases. So Mizizizis argues in their video that tutorials should not waste your time like ever. People don't want to see you type code or screw around in the editor interface. You should always get straight to the point, create and explain the features you want to develop. This is a clear argument in favor of manual tutorials. If you ever watched Mrs. tutorials, you know that they are exactly like this. So are these tutorials good or bad? Well, I think they are great for some people and terrible for others. Let me explain. Manual tutorials can be great for intermediate or advanced game developers. They already have a developed skill set and a lot of experience under their belt. However, oftentimes they want to either implement a specific feature or develop a game in a genre that they haven't tried yet. Let's say Andrew is an indie dev with two years of experience and four submitted game jam projects. He wants to implement a dynamic co-op camera for his next game. He finds a three minute no bullshit manual tutorial video for this. He can already tell that the end result is exactly what he's looking for. There is a good chance that he understands the material because A, he has a lot of experience of game dev programming, and B, he is already familiar with how cameras work in the game engine of his choice. He solved the problem, learned how to do that specific feature, and wasted no time. So manual equals awesome. Well, on the other hand, it's an awful way to learn for beginners. Why? First of all, everything happens too fast and they get lost. Best case scenario, they can copy what the tutor is doing. But can they apply it to their own game? Will they understand the underlying concepts, the whys? Most likely they won't. They might feel good about the tutorial because they created something which looks cool, but they won't be able to use any of the skills in a different context. Mark from GMTK ran into the same problem when he started learning Unity from tutorials. He essentially realized this and said he adopted a three-step process. First, learn the basics, then recreate small games on his own, and lastly, start experimenting. But how do you learn the basics? It seems like manual tutorials are not the answer, right? Our instinct is to turn to the other end of the spectrum, and it's not a bad idea, because to learn the basics, you have to know the hows, the whats, and the whys for a lot of different concepts. In the context of game development, you need to understand things like frames, delta time, collision detection, rendering, 2D and 3D positioning, and so on. On top of that, programming itself can be a big hurdle with its variables, functions, conditionals, loops, just to name a few. See my point here? Manual tutorials will get a beginner nowhere because it's practically impossible 
to learn and understand these things without proper explanation and examples. That's what people call tutorial hell. Then we need long videos with proper explanations and examples, right? According to Nathan from GDQuest, that's not the case at all. People who learn online want shortcuts and they want to get results fast. So the team at GDQuest created a tool for absolute beginners to learn programming in GDScript, Godot's own scripting language. It's an awesome tool, which lies at the 3W end of the spectrum with proper explanations and practical tasks. If you're a beginner watching this video and you want to learn Godot or game development, I definitely recommend checking it out. That said, I slightly disagree with Nathan here. Doing these bite-sized, contextualized lessons is a great way to learn for some people. But there are students who want the real thing. They want to open Godot and start creating games right away, even if it's harder. One of the most praised online computer science courses is Harvard's CS50 course. And for a good reason, it's awesome. However, the lectures are anything but fast and they provide no shortcuts. It sounds kind of contradictory, right? Nathan also mentions this course in the video and says that we don't have anything as good for Godot. I agree and that's exactly my point here. We should have something like this. That's why I started working on a beginner Godot game dev course for people with zero programming and game dev experience. Subscribe if you don't want to miss it. The key takeaway here is this. Between the learn GD script from zero and the more traditional 3W courses, pick whatever works for you. What matters is beginners should look for tutorials on the right side of the spectrum so they can develop a deeper understanding of the fundamental concepts. However, advanced users should avoid these tutorials most of the time. It is too slow for them and they usually don't need detailed explanations to follow along and understand the material. There are exceptions to this, of course, especially with more difficult material. If Jane knows nothing about procedural generation and wants to learn the ins and outs of the topic, she is much better off with a good 3W tutorial than watching 10 manual tutorials. Okay, now we know a lot about tutorials, but everything I said so far is the teacher's responsibility. What can you do to get the most out of tutorials? As a teacher with multiple years of both online and classroom-based teaching experience, here are my tips for you. The first tip is to set achievable goals to your learning sessions. If you sit down to a beginner tutorial, ask yourself, what do I want to get out of this? Doing this helps a lot with motivation and keeps you focused throughout the learning. Here are some good examples. I want to understand how Godot nodes work. I want to create a simple game like Flappy Bird. Here are some bad ones. I want to become a good game developer. I want to create my dream game. Why are these bad? Because they are two big goals for one session. They are not achievable. It's okay to have distant goals, but give yourself time to achieve them. You can become a good game developer overnight. It takes years. My second tip is to take notes. People are lazy, especially in an online learning environment. It's easy to just sit back, relax, and listen to the tutorial. You listen, it makes sense, you think you're learning a lot. However, your attention can easily drift away. Also, there's a good chance that you forget most of the material later, even if it made sense when you were listening. Good news, pen and paper is all you need. Taking notes engages your brain, makes you think about the material, and keeps you focused. There's a myriad of studies showing that active note-taking results in much better learning and retention. Plus, you'll have a text-based guide you can refer back to when you start making your own games. I know it sounds like a lot of work, and it is, but it's definitely worth it. If I could pick only one piece of advice, I would definitely say taking notes. It's that good. My third tip is to actually schedule your learning. Make time for your learning. Please don't try to learn game development in the bathroom or in your car. Allocate your free time to it. Those circumstances are not ideal for learning. Put on some lo-fi, grab a cup of tea or coffee and say that I'm going to study for an hour today. Devoting time specifically for learning helps you to focus and achieve your goals. I promise it makes a big difference. Tip 4 is all about questions and rubber ducking. Ideally, tutors ask questions in their tutorials. If they do, 
pause the video and try to answer the questions or at least think about them. This keeps you focused and engages your brain with the material more. It also helps you to exercise critical thinking, which is a super useful skill for game development. If there are no questions in the tutorial, you can pause the video anyways a couple of times. Take a rubber duck or a plushie and try to explain the thing you learned to them. I know it sounds super silly, but it works wonders. Trust me and give it a go. Tip 5 is about applying your knowledge elsewhere and trying to experiment on your own. So if you learned a lot of stuff from a Flappy Bird tutorial, try to apply that knowledge to something else before you move on to the next one. It's important to experiment on your own and try to create small games or projects with similar scope. Maybe add a couple of new features or do something like doodle jump after Flappy Bird. Just don't try to create an FPS shooter after Flappy Bird, one step at a time. This is called incremental learning. You are much more likely to succeed if you take on projects which are at the ceiling of your current skill or level. This way you just cement the new knowledge and set yourself up to success. Sounds cool, right? My last tip is about self-reflection. It's always useful to take a step back and look back at what you've achieved with a learning session. Could you achieve your goal? Did you find the learning experience useful? If not, what went wrong? Did you pick the right material? What can you change to make the next session more productive? Self-reflection is especially useful for autonomous learning when you learn on your own because there is no teacher present to give you feedback. However, you can always evaluate yourself in a couple of minutes by asking and answering those questions. And that concludes this video. Was it useful? How do you learn from tutorials? What should creators do to make tutorials better? Let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.